Welcome to the um, afternoon session, the workshop session on yoga for stress. So we will begin now. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Sri Raghuramji to come up and uh, give a brief introduction before we go into the uh, workshop. Namaste to all of you. Uh, <clears throat> the session that we are going to have is called as the SMET SMET or Self Management of Excessive Tension. Uh, the idea suggests basically that we are trying to work on our stress to see that how we can become better, we'll be able to manage that. And earlier we used to have it as self-management of executive tension, thinking that people in the executive line, they will have it, they stress. Once it so happened that in uh, India, in the um, army, that we, I was giving a program of the self-management of the executive tension for all the army officers. And they liked the whole program, and they probably they have discussed with the families at home. And the next day, the ladies came. They said that, do you think that only men are, have the prerogative of having stress, even we are also under stress? In fact, we are not only having our own stress, but we have to manage their stress also. <laughs> so naturally, it is not just only executive tension. Then immediately we had to change the whole thing into excessive tension. Because essentially, the certain amount of tension is necessary to see that we are able to do it better, the functions and all that. And our system is also designed to take that extra load on it. Like for example, if this conference was made possible, how many people, how much of work that they have to impact, I was seeing them that these people that almost like they were working for 20 hours a day kind of a thing. But then there is a lot of joy in doing that. So that means to say the work, it was a useful stress. And that's what in the modern terminology we call it as use stress. But then there is also a stress which we have to manage it and that's what is the excessive tension. So that's why basically this program we call it as self-management of excessive tension. One more small little thing that I would like to share with you and the effect of this particular program and then I will, I would like to hand over the mic to she will carry on with the presentation as well as the practice session. This is a workshop, so we'll have a practice session. A friend of mine having hypertension, some diabetes, and maybe some suffering from insomnia, he went to the doctor, and the doctor tested him and all that, and said that, look, you don't really have to take tablets. You could should be able to manage your stress by going for yoga. And then he started, he came to us, and he came to me, and then I put him in Prashanti, our center. 15 days he stayed. During that 15 days, he overcame his hypertension, and then sleep was not, everything was good. Then he went back to the work. He was my colleague when I was working in the office. So after about six months, when he went back to the work, I happened to meet him in Bangalore and then uh, city. And then I said, uh, the moment he saw me, he said, wow, wonderful, nice to see you. And then I said, how are you doing? He said, fine, but I would like to share my experience with you. I said, uh, what is that? He said, before I came for yoga, before I came across this practice of Smeh, I was in Bangalore and uh, uh, I'm going to the office on my scooter. And if somebody overtakes me, I would, uh, Say, how can you take me? I'm in a hurry, not he. And then I would like to just uh, throttle up so that I have to go ahead. And then similarly, the traffic lights, the traffic moves slowly. I can't wait for that. I'm in a hurry, so I have to honk at them. And all that, I would call the police. I said, these people are disturbing the traffic, holding the traffic. Same way in the office, that somebody comes two minutes late, I shout at them. Somebody puts up a wrong letter, I throw the files at them. But ever since I came back from Prashanti, then at the traffic, if somebody wants to overtake, 
I slow down with a smile. I would say, please, you are, I'm not in a hurry. You are in a hurry. And I would not lose my composure. And the same with the traffic light. The whole traffic moves. I move in harmony with the traffic. The office, somebody puts up wrong file. I would correct the file and go to them and then say that I made it. You know, corrections and all those things, please note. And then this, my colleagues in the office, they said, earlier used to shout at us, used to throw the files at us and all that. We were so used to it. Now you don't do it, we are afraid of it. <laughs> Essentially, the idea is that, look at all this statement that he made. That is, I slow down when somebody overtakes. Slow is the principle there. And I keep my smile. And another thing is that when the traffic moves, I move in harmony. The office that I show my love and compassion to the patient, to the colleagues. So essentially, that you can all these principles: slowness, calmness, pleasantness, love and compassion. These are all the signs of yoga. So this practice essentially does not change the world outside. The traffic is the same. The density of the traffic is the same. People in the world outside are the same. Office people are the same. But you change yourself in such a way that the same work looks wonderful, acceptable, and pleasant. So this is how essentially it is not to change the world outside, it will change ourselves. And if we change, the world looks better, the world looks wonderful. So that's why basically that the good and bad in the world outside is not in the world outside, but it is in our attitude. And that is what basically this practice is going to be about. And it is something that we need to work with ourselves. In fact, nobody else can relax for our sake. We have to relax for ourselves. Nobody can maintain our awareness. We have to maintain our awareness. These are the essential principles in this practice of self-management of excessive tension. And the more details of the technical aspects of it and the philosophy aspect of it, um, will present in front of you and then she will give you the practice. At the end of it, we have time for you to question and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ramji. So I will um, go through, like Ramji said, some of the um, aspects of uh, stress management in this presentation before we uh, begin the practice session. So the title, uh, I've named it as Staying Calm Through Any Storm. And we have all experienced storms in our lives at some point or the other, different kinds of storms, different for different people, but they are there. And they will come in the future also. We cannot say just because you're happy today, I'm not going to have a storm tomorrow. So let's learn how to go through this. So what is stress? There are different definitions of stress, but the one that makes sense to us is that stress, like Raghunamji says, is our reaction to any situation. It is our response, it is how the way we deal with it. And another definition which I really liked that I came across is, stress is the difference between where we are and where we want to be. So we are in a certain place today, we want to be somewhere, a student, gets a B, wants to get an A, uh, manager wants to get a promotion, whatever the situation, the difference that we perceive where, that where we want to be, and that is what causes the stress within us. I'm stuck in a traffic jam, I'm late for a meeting, I want to be in the meeting already, I don't want to be in the traffic jam, that's the stress. So it is, again, we'll see whether there's a reality there or is it perception, how much of that, we'll see how, how that uh, affects us. So when we are faced with a stressful situation, and we talked about that the uh, response is what matters in a stressful situation. There's two ways that human beings have been kind of wired to respond to any stress. We either stay and fight, or we run away from that. So it's a fight or flight response. And this is sort of a, a biological wiring that we have, uh, the way we respond to any, um, any stressful situation. Now, the other aspect of our wiring is that once that stress has passed, we recover. So we kind of come back to a baseline.
So we are we're stressed, we have something, for example, there's this conference, uh, we're, like Raghunabhji said, we're all working very hard, there's stress, but then we recover after, after the event has passed. So the body again is wired to recover, and the nervous system in the body has two components, there's the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic, and the parasympathetic is the one that helps us to rest and digest once the stressful situation is passed, and we have either responded by fight or flight, we are able to now rest, relax, digest, and uh, recover. Now the other aspect of the stre any, our reaction to a stressful situation is, is it really a stressful situation? Does it really need to be a stressful situation? Sometimes we perceive the danger, but then in hindsight we think, there was no danger there. There was nothing there. It is, again, it is our reaction. So the classic example that is given in all our Sanskrit literature and Vedantic literature is the snake and rope example. So in the, you're walking in the dark, you see something laying on the, on the ground, it looks like a snake. Immediately you, per, you perceive the snake and immediately your whole body is reacting to the fact that, you, that it is a snake. And then the light falls on it and you find out that it's actually just a rope. But when you thought it was a snake, that was very real to you at that moment. And you reacted based on that knowledge that that is a snake. However, the knowledge later when you get the knowledge that it is only a rope, you go back and you think, why did I react that way? That way? It is only a rope. So a lot of times in our life when we face with difficult situations, we really have to look at it in a more realistic manner. Is this really worth getting stressed over? So a lot of times it's not. It's just a perception. But in modern lifestyle, the speed, like Raghunabhji said, we, are, we live in times when everything is just moving fast, fast, fast. We are expected to produce more, we are expected to do more, um, we are expected to deal with more situations. And typically what happens, like, we, like I mentioned, there is the rest and digest period. So if you look at the graph, the line going up is showing the activity, the intensity goes up, of our activity in response to any situation, but then the parasympathetic uh, response kicks in once the situation is passed and the line com coming back down shows. down shows the parasympathetic response kicking in, bringing us back to a baseline. However, you'll see in this graph that the first time it comes back to baseline, but the second time it doesn't come back to baseline. It is, it's forming a new baseline. And this is, this is again what, what we do in our life, the way we respond to the situation. We don't give ourselves enough time to come back to this baseline. We just don't know how to come back here. We stay here at the new baseline. And then the next response does the same thing, except now it creates a higher new baseline. So for instance, this could be 120 over 80 blood pressure. The next time you, you face a stressful situation, you come out of it, you're up to 130 over 90. And then you go up to 140 over 100. So like that, it just, it just it's a cumulative effect. Yes. So you, you keep creating new baselines as you go along, and finally you end up with uh, some kind of chronic ailment, some kind of chronic situation. So this is kind of the, the, the thing that happens to us uh, with the fast-paced modern lifestyle, where we just don't give ourselves enough time to rest and digest and allow the body to recover in a natural way. So what are the different uh, manifestations of this uh, stress response? Different things happen in our body. Um, our muscles tighten up, our pulse rate goes up, the blood pressure goes up, breath rate increases, um, we experience all kinds of emotions, um, anger, fear, anxiety, 
depression, and we get restless, uh, we, we lack concentration and clarity of thought. So all, all these things happen when we are responding to a stressful situation, and it's, some of this is involuntary, some of this, uh, you know, we, we kind of uh, exacerbate it with our own response. And the effect of this, like I mentioned, um, I talked about hypertension, but there's many, many different ways in which uh, people can respond, dep depending on what is a weak, weak link in, in your bodies, in your genetics. So we say that uh, some people are prone to diabetes. Um, all that means is that if that person has a certain propensity to it, they may get the di that diabetic condition, but really it is under their control because it's the way they're responding to situations, the way they're uh, dealing with stressful situations. And because they have the propensity for that particular ailment, it kind of shows up, it manifests. It manifests simply because of the way that they respond to it. So similarly with all the other things, migraines, um, autoimmune diseases, um, headaches, so there's a, there's a different ways in which the body reacts to um, stress. And um, based on research in um, uh, Vyasa, there's a, this, this diagram actually shows very nicely that all the different ways in which the situations kind of manifest these ailments in us. There are internal demanding situations, there's external demanding situations. So an internal demanding situation would be just, just a, a self, an expectation of, of performing something of yourself. You're demanding it of yourself. External demanding situation, of course, would be like if a, a, a mother has a baby, a newborn baby, and the baby keeps waking up several times in the night, and um, you know she has lack of sleep, or you get you go to a new job, and your boss is very demanding. Both. There are external factors. And what happens here is it speeds up your mind. So the effect of these external and internal situations is your mind speeds up, you uh, start manifesting uh, through the autonomic nervous system, the uh, voluntary nervous system, it goes through your psyche, it speeds up your mind, and it manifests in faster aging, uh, a degradation of your immune system. So uh, basically it's, it's the speed. So again, we, we, um, um, like, I, like I said, we know now that stress is because of our response and it's not the situation. But the good news is that the response is in our hands. The situation may not be. But the problem is that you may say, well, okay, I'm just going to relax. Uh, I'm going to just, every time I get stressed out, I'm just going to you know, get, watch TV or um, watch, go, go see a movie or just relax and I'll get back. That is true. Yes, you can. You can do that. But the problem with that is, are you changing the stress response habit that you have developed? Are you changing the way in which you resp respond to stress? Are you changing your habit? And that is something that we don't do. Um, and uh, basically, fundamentally, we are the same person. So for, in for instance, you go to sleep. When you sleep, you're not stressed. Deep sleep. But then when you wake up the next morning, you're the same person and you react to stress in the same way. So there is really nothing has changed. So sure, you got some relaxation, but you're back to responding to the stress in the same way. So what is, how do we, how do we do that? How do we, how do we change our stress response? It's very, actually very simple yogic method of just watching the breath and watching our thoughts. It sounds so simple that you would say, I want my money back. <laughs> But really, it works. It's, it's that simple. And what that does is it eventually strengthens your parasympathetic system. So you're now reversing your stress, stress response habit. You're now creating a new habit of responding to stressful situations. And that is basically the basis of yoga, which is it is a conscious process of going back to our stress-free, true nature. And you're doing it consciously. And that is the difference. So again, I, I talked about sleep versus yoga. Now exercise versus yoga, again, the same similar difference where with exercise, yes, exercise does uh, generate endorphins and yes, you have 
uh, you know, uh, reduce your cortisol, uh, you know, in your bloodstream, and yes, all those benefits are there. But again, let me ask you that same question. Have you changed your stress response habit? No, it's still the same. I mean, yes, you have developed better capacity to deal with physical stresses by getting on the treadmill and, you know, um, get, uh, increasing your, your cardio uh, uh, vascular system, but really the same, it's, you're still the same person. Whereas with yoga, it is uh, really about working on the mind. It's working on the way you respond to the stress. And it also improves the mind's ability to handle stress. Uh, some of you may have attended uh, uh, Prabhuji's talk this morning from the Chimya Mission when he talked about developing mental immunity. And that's what this is all about, developing the, that immunity to the situation and being able to respond appropriately. So life is cycle of ups and downs, and we can't avoid it. We, are, we cannot go hide in a cave. We have to engage in our life, in our lives, in our relationships, in our jobs, whatever it is that we do. We cannot run away, and it is going to be like this. We, this is reality. However, we don't have to succumb to everything that comes our way. We can learn a technique to be calmer, to calm ourselves down, to respond better. So going, so how do we do this? So it's very easy to say, yes, calm down, yes, change your response habit, yes, do this, and do that, watch your breath, watch your thoughts. But really, how many of us can really sit down for just half an hour, 45 minutes, and just watch our breath, and just watch our thoughts? It's very difficult. You, you really have to be a very advanced meditator to be able to do that. And therefore, in Vyasa, um, our Guruji, um, Sri Nagendra, um, helped develop this technique, which is a very unique technique called cyclic meditation. And cyclic meditation is one of the techniques that comes under the whole umbrella of SMET that Raghuramji talked about, which is the self-management of excessive tension. And here I want to emphasize the word self. It is you who are doing it. It is not a teacher or someone who's teaching it to you. It, it's, we, we can only teach you the technique. We can only take the horse to the water, you can't make it drink, right? So it is really you who are generating that capacity to change your response, habit, and to develop the skill to uh, manage the stressful situation. So the, the way this technique works, let me just go to the next slide. The second meditation, these are all the different steps that we will be going through when we practice it. We start with a prayer, and then we go to what's called an instant relaxation technique. So what we do in this one, it's a very short two to three minute technique where we tighten all the different parts of the body in sequence following the instructions, and then we just let it go. So what happens here is you have a surge of blood flow through your body. You know, you tighten it and then you let it go. You get the blood, blood flowing. It it's, um, uh, stimulates you at first and then you relax. And then we go through this process of centering where um, it's basically in Tadasana, we, we, we stand and we try to make sure that we are standing with perfect vertical posture, centering ourselves, and I'll, I'll walk you through the steps of, uh, of that process. And then we go through Adhikati Chakrasana, and here there's a difference between the way we do the asanas in the cyclic meditation versus uh, the way uh, you would do it in any other kind of class. Here, we're basically going very, very slowly through the steps of doing the asana. So, why do we do that? So, when, um, when Sri Nagendra developed this technique, the idea was that to focus more on people who are very, um, very body, body conscious, body related, it's very hard for people who ha have uh, 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 rapid thoughts, a um, uh, lot, of, lot of tension, a lot of uh, stress, to just sit down and meditate, I mean, it's, or, or just to do any kind of meditation. It's, it's just not possible. So if you are very connected with the body, then let's start with the body. Let's start with the Anamaya Kosha, and then bring use the body itself to bring the mind down, to bring the mind down to a calmer state. So the approach here is to go through the Anamaya Kosha, and then go through the mind to bring the mind down. And so that's why with Adhikadi Chakrasana, or any asana that we do here, we do it very, very slowly, extremely slowly. And you will see that it's quite difficult to do that. 
your mind literally has to be on that part of the body that you are doing the asana with. If your mind wanders, you tend to speed up. It's very easy to just do some asana very quickly, but it's very, very hard to slow it down, and that reflects on how slow your mind is. Then we'll go through a rela quick relaxation technique, and then a couple of more asanas. So the idea here is to stimulate and relax, stimulate and relax, and that develops the, uh, your, again, your strengthens your parasympathetic response. And then we end with a deep relaxation and closing prayer. So um, I have uh, one of our wise, youngest YSC uh, uh, students. She's just finished her uh, yoga teacher's training, Renuka Bilwakar, who will be um, demonstrating the asanas. So Renuka, can you just step over here? So we have some yoga mats laid out here for people who want to practice on the mat, and um, uh, others can uh, practice uh, on the chair, if you like. Um, so what, I, what I'll have Renuka do is um, just quickly demonstrate Ardhakati Chakrasana. Of course, we'll be doing it very slowly in the practice, but uh, the demonstration will be fast. Okay. So, from the Indian Tadasana. I'd like to go on to the practices uh, on the mat, because you will find the effect there, actually, rather than sitting and doing it. Okay. So, uh, we haven't come to that yet. So, she's turning the palm up. And then she's going to take her hand up, give her a nice vertical stretch. Did you take that on the mic? Oh, no, 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 no. It's echoing, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know if they can call it. Okay. Okay. Give a nice vertical stretch, and then she's going to bend the back of the over. Yeah. Bend the back. Right hand is hanging cheek. And she's going to find a point where she is able to hold for a long time without any stress to the body, pleasurable kind of pain. And now on an inhale, she's going to come up and vertical, give a nice vertical stretch again, lower the hand down, turn the palm, and then lower it down. So I'll be giving breathing instructions also to go along with that. And then we do complementary, right side and left side. Then the next asana is the Ushtrasana. So for Ushtrasana, she's going to sit, sit down, Shital Dandasana. And then she hold the legs in to Vajrasana. Again, we'll be doing it very slowly. This is a quick demo for, the, for those who are not familiar with what the asanas are. Come up on your knees. Support your back. Inhale. And bend back just as much as you can go. Of course, she's very flexible. But if you don't have and then if you can, release your hands and hold your heels. And here we will be chanting Akara. Um, so again, this is this is just uh, this is the actual Ustrasana. If you can do it, fine. If not, please don't attempt. Please listen to your body and just only attempt as far as you can go. And then come up and just hold your back and come up. Huh. You can just do that. Stay there, stay there. So you can just do that that much as much as you can bend with holding the holding your back. Thank you. 
your body and maintain the state of pleasure of okay. A little pain is okay, but feel the pleasure. We feel the pleasure of it. And feel all the changes that is happening. Observe every every little thing, develop that awareness. So when you when you when you go through this whole cyclic meditation process, you're basically teaching yourself the skill to watch your thoughts, watch your watch your breath, watch your thoughts. That's that's all it is. It is very simple, but it is very difficult for us to develop that habit, and this this will help us progress through that. Thank you. So um, what we'll do now. Because I can, I can do it without the mic. It's okay. Yeah, you need the mic. Audio will be much better. Maybe the more. Oh, okay. There's no hiss now. Yeah. We changed it. Okay. 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 So what I would like to um, request all of you to do is to lay down in shavasana with your head towards me. So shavasana on your back. Legs apart, hands on either side, palms facing the ceiling, fingers curling naturally, palms facing the ceiling. Just take a moment to observe your breath. We always begin with a prayer. So while you're in Shavasana, bring your palms together in a Namaskar Mudra, in a prayer gesture. And repeat after me. Laye Sambodhaye Chittam Laye Sambodhaye Chittam Vikshiptam Shamaye Punaha Vikshiptam shamayet punaha Sakashayam vijaniyat Sakashayam vijaniyat Samapraptam na chalayet Samapraptam na chalayet Slowly release your hands to the side. Let me explain the meaning of this prayer. Laye sambodhe chittam, vikshiptam, shamayet punaha. So when the mind is disturbed, when the mind is agitated, let us calm it down. Let us understand its nature. And when it is calm, let us not disturb it again. So it is simply saying, let us develop a state of calm mind that we can maintain throughout our life. Now we will move on to an instant relaxation technique. Bring your legs close together, heels touching each other, hands on either side of the body with the palms facing your thighs. And I'm going to give you instructions to tighten all the, all the parts of your body one after the other. So keep them, keep all the parts tightened at all times as I give you the instruction and walk you through different parts of the body. If you uh, if you have a hypertension um, which is uh, sort of not under control then please avoid this practice and just stay in Shavasana and breathe deeply and, uh, and just enjoy your breath. But if you don't have any issues with hypertension, so you can go ahead and practice. So let us begin this, this practice. Tighten your toes, tighten your ankles, tighten your shins, tighten the knees, tighten the thighs, tighten the buttocks, and tighten your pelvic area. Exhale, collapse your abdomen, Tighten your arms, tighten your, your fists, tighten the shoulders, inhale and expand your chest. And now tighten the neck, tighten the face, tighten your, your jaws, your cheeks, tighten your, your uh, forehead, 
Squeeze, squeeze, tighten, tighten, tighten. Relax. Let go. Collapse completely. Let us chant one Omkara together. Take a deep inhale. and slowly come up to sitting position and come up to standing position for the next practice of centering come up to Tadasana bring your legs together hands on either side back is straight The shoulders back and down, close the eyes and now feel, just observe how you feel in Tadasana. Do you feel straight like Bahubali or do you feel like you're rocking back and forth, front to back, side to side? Now we'll start with centering. So what we do here is basically just lean forward, shifting the weight of your body from the heels to the toes very slowly and draw, go back to the center. And now slowly lean back, shifting the weight from the toes to the heels without lifting the toes off the ground and come back to the center. And now we'll slowly lean to the right, shifting the weight to the right edge of the right foot. Again, both feet are on the ground. And slowly back to center. Slowly shift the weight to the left side of the left foot. And back to the center. Now close your, keep your eyes closed. And now observe, is there any difference in the way you stand, you feel less rocking, less movement. Move on to the Kati Chakrasana. Now in this position, what we are going to do is we are going to start on the right side. And follow my instructions, please. Slowly raise your right hand. Very slowly. You are now at 5 degrees. Now at 10 degrees. Continue to go up. 20, 30 degrees. 45 degrees. Continue moving the arm up slowly, very slowly. Keep your awareness on the hand. I see most of you are already at 90 degrees. And now we are at horizontal level. Turn the palm to face the ceiling. Feel the hand. Continue raising the hand up very slowly. Feel the sensations in your palm. Feel the blood flow. Observe. Maintain normal breathing. Continue raising up very slowly. Right now, at 135 degrees. Only halfway up. Keep going up very slowly. Very slowly. And now, you are at vertical. Give yourself a little bit of a stretch up and 
slowly bend over to the left side, keeping your body in one plane. Allow your left hand to just hang freely by the side. It slides down your thigh as you bend. And find that point where you are most comfortable. But you're still able to feel some stretch. Feel into your body. Feel into your breath. Maintain that state of concentration. And now slowly start straightening up, keeping your hand vertical. Slowly straighten up, up, up. Stretch your palm up again. And start bringing the hand down very slowly, one degree at a time. Very slowly, very nice. Slowly come down to 135. Continue the motion, feel the motion. Follow the, your hand with your awareness. See how difficult it is to be aware of one single point in your body the whole time. Resist the urge to drop the hand. We're now horizontal. Turn the palm to face the floor. And continue the journey of your hand down. Down. All the way down. Very slowly. Until the hand is all the way down. Step your feet apart slightly. And relax in Shitipatasana. Keep your eyes closed and observe the sensations in your body. The right side versus the left side. What is the difference before the practice, after the practice? Now bring your legs together and we will do the same on the left side. Come back to Tadasana. Left hand starts going up. Meditate on that hand. Keep the awareness as you slowly bring the hand up. You're now at 45 degrees. Take the hand up to 90 degrees. Turn the palm to face the ceiling. And continue taking it up. Follow the motion of the hand, every degree, every degree. Complete concentration. The better your concentration, the slower that you can do this. Slowing it down. You're now vertical. Stretch your hand up and lean over to the right side. Feel the stretch on the left side of your body, the whole left side. It's a wonderful stretch almost all the way from the left heel up to your left fingers, fingertips. Run your awareness through the whole body. Now slowly start straightening up. Very slowly, come up to vertical, give yourself a vertical stretch and slowly lower the hand, maintain normal breathing throughout the practice. Normal breathing, lower the hand down, now your hand is horizontal, turn the palm to face the floor. And continue lowering down very slowly. Your hand might tingle. But just become aware of all the sensations. Release the hand all the way down. Step your feet apart. And we will chant one akara here. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Now 
now slowly come down to the mat. First sit down and then stretch your legs out in front of you. And Shitila Dandasana. This is a relaxed sitting posture. Again, maintaining the awareness in your body. Take a few moments, take a few deep breaths and relax in this posture. We'll chant another akara here. Inhale deeply. Ah. Facing the ceiling, 
Hands in comfortable position on either side of your body. Fingers curling naturally. <coughs> Observe your breath. Relax the toes. Relax the ankles. Relax the shins, calf muscles, knees. Bring the awareness to each part as I mention it. Relax the thighs, the hips, the whole pelvic area, the whole lower portion of your body is relaxed. We will enhance this by adding the vibrations of the akara. Inhale.
feel the effect of the makara. Observe the effect it has on the speed of your thoughts, on your mind. And let us put all three sounds together into an omkara, a, o, ma, with the ma being the longest. Inhale deeply.
can do is now that you know what the asanas are, you can do the whole practice with your eyes closed. And that will give the meditative effect. Because in the middle, if you have to keep opening your eyes to watch, you kind of lose the, that inner concentration. Okay, so some of the, the key points is practice slowly without any jerks. And don't worry about what the other people are doing. Do your own thing. And the movement should be smooth and effortless. And again, please uh, hold only as much as you can. Go, go to whatever point that you can, you know, in the bend. Because you should be able to hold with normal breathing. If at any time you have difficulty breathing, that means you're gone too far. Especially with Ustrasana, you don't want to be in a place where you can breathe freely. So perfection is not the goal. Remember, this is a, it's a meditation session, right? Perfection is not the goal. The goal is to be effortless. The goal is awareness. The goal is every moment you are aware of what you're doing, aware of your breath, aware of your thoughts, aware of your body. Again, this is your body. And maintain the state of pleasure of pain. A little pain is okay, but feel the pleasure. Feel, feel the pleasure of it. And feel all the changes that is happening. Observe every every little thing, develop that awareness. So when you when you when you go through this whole scientific meditation process, you're basically teaching yourself the skill to watch your thoughts, watch your breath, watch your breath, watch your thoughts. That's that's all it is. It is very simple, but it is very difficult for us to develop that habit and this this will help us both. So um, what we'll do now is I'll just take this thing. So if you want to practice. Um, um, is anybody anybody going to practice on the chair or only only this discussion for the Hello? Because I can, I can do it without the mic. So they can Sharad, do you need the mic? It's okay. Yeah, you need the mic. Audio will be much better. Maybe the mic will. Oh, okay. There's no hiss now. Yeah. Okay. So what I would like to um, request all of you to do is to lay down in Shavasana with your head towards me. So Shavasana on your back. Legs apart, hands on either side, palms facing the ceiling, fingers curling naturally, palms facing the ceiling. Just take a moment to observe your breath. We always begin with a prayer. So while you're in Shavasana, bring your palms together in a Namaskar Mudra, in the prayer gesture. And repeat after me. Laye Sambodhaye Chittam Laye Sambodhaye Chittam Vikshiptam Shamaye Punaha Vikshiptam shamayet punaha Sakashayam vijaniyat Sakashayam vijaniyat Samapraptam na chalayet Samapraptam na chalayet Slowly release your hands to the side. Let me explain the meaning of this prayer. Laye sambodhe chittam, vikshiptam, shamayet punaha. So when the mind is disturbed, when the mind is agitated, let us calm it down. Let us understand its nature. And when it is calm, let us not disturb it again. So it is simply saying, let us develop a state of calm mind that we can maintain throughout our life. Now we will move on to an instant relaxation technique. Bring your legs close together, heels touching each other, hands on either side of the body with the palms facing your thighs. And I'm going to give you instructions to tighten all the, all the parts of your body one after the other. So keep them, keep 
all the parts tightened at all times as I give you the instruction and walk you through different parts of the body. If you, uh, if you have hypertension, um, which is uh, sort of not under control, then please avoid this practice and just stay in Shavasana and breathe deeply and, uh, and just enjoy your breath. But if you don't have any issues with hypertension, so you can go ahead and practice. So let us begin this, this practice. Tighten your toes, tighten your ankles, tighten your shins, tighten the knees, tighten the thighs, tighten the buttocks, and tighten your pelvic area. Exhale, collapse your abdomen, tighten your arms, tighten your, your fists, tighten the shoulders, inhale and expand your chest. And now tighten the neck, tighten the face, tighten your your jaws, your cheeks, tighten your, your uh, forehead, squeeze, squeeze, tighten, 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 relax, let go, collapse completely. Let us chant one Om Kara together, take a deep inhale. and slowly come up to a sitting position and come up to a standing position for the next practice of centering. Come up to Tadasana. Bring your legs together. Hands on either side. Back is straight. The shoulders back and down, close the eyes and now feel, just observe how you feel in Tadasana. Do you feel straight like Bahubali or do you feel like you're rocking back and forth, front to back, side to side? Now we'll start with centering. So what we do here is basically just lean forward, shifting the weight of your body from the heels to the toes very slowly and drop, go back to the center. And now slowly lean back, shifting the weight from the toes to the heels without lifting the toes off the ground and come back to the center. And now we'll slowly lean to the right, shifting the weight to the right edge of the right foot. Again, both feet are on the ground. And slowly back to center. Slowly shift the weight to the left side of the left foot. And back to the center. Now close your, keep your eyes closed and now observe, is there any difference in the way you stand, you feel less rocking, less movement. Move on to Tadda Kati Chakrasana. Now in this position, what we are going to do is we are going to start on the right side. And follow my instructions, please. Slowly raise your right hand. Very slowly. You are now at 5 degrees. Now at 10 degrees. Continue to go up. 20, 30 degrees. 45 degrees. Continue moving the arm up. Slowly, very slowly, keep your awareness on the hand. 
I see most of you are already at 90 degrees. And now we are at horizontal level. Turn the palm to face the ceiling. Feel the hand. Continue raising the hand up very slowly. Feel the sensations in your palm. Feel the blood flow. Observe. Maintain normal breathing. Continue raising up very slowly. We are now at 135 degrees. Only halfway up. Keep going up very slowly. Very slowly. And now you are at vertical. Give yourself a little bit of a stretch up. And slowly bend over to the left side, keeping your body in one plane. Allow your left hand to just hang freely by the side. It slides down your thigh as you bend. And find that point where you are most comfortable. But you're still able to feel some stretch. Feel into your body. Feel into your breath. Maintain that state of concentration. And now slowly start straightening up, keeping your hand vertical. Slowly straighten up, up, up. Stretch your palm up again. And start bringing the hand down very slowly, one degree at a time. Very slowly, very nice. Slowly come down to 135, continue the motion, feel the motion, follow the, your hand with your awareness. See how difficult it is to be aware of one single point in your body the whole time. Resist the urge to drop the hand. We are now horizontal, turn the palm to face the floor. And continue the journey of your hand down, down, all the way down, very slowly until the hand is all the way down. Step your feet apart slightly and relax in Shitiptapasana. Keep your eyes closed and ob observe the sensations in your body. Right side versus the left side. What is the difference before the practice, after the practice? Now bring your legs together and we will do the same on the left side. Come back to Tadasana. Left hand starts going up. Meditate on that hand. Keep the awareness as you slowly bring the hand up. You're now at 45 degrees. Take the hand up to 90 degrees. Turn the palm to face the ceiling. And continue taking it up. Follow the motion of the hand every degree, every degree. Complete concentration. The better your concentration, the slower that you can do this. Slowing it down. And now vertical. Stretch your hand up and lean over to the right side. Feel the stretch on the left side of your body, the whole left side. It's a wonderful stretch almost all the way from the left heel up to your left fingers, fingertips. Run your awareness through the whole body. Now slowly start straightening up, very slowly. Come up to vertical, give yourself a vertical stretch. And slowly lower the hand, maintain normal breathing throughout the practice. 
normal breathing. Lower the hand down. Now your hand is horizontal. Turn the palm to face the floor. And continue lowering down very slowly. Your hand might tingle. But just become aware of all the sensations. Release the hand all the way down. Step your feet apart. And we will chant one akara here. Take a deep inhale. Stretch your legs out in front of you in Shitila Dandasana. This is a relaxed sitting posture. Again, maintaining the awareness in your body. Take a few moments to take a few deep breaths and relax in this posture. We'll chant another akara here. Inhale deeply. Ah. Both your hands up over your head as you raise 
up to vertical position. Bring your hands down by your side. Release both your legs. And turn around and lay down on the mat in Shavasana with your head towards me. relaxation technique, again following my instructions, spread your legs apart in Shavasana, arms facing the ceiling, hands in comfortable position on either side of your body, fingers curling naturally, <coughs> observe your breath, relax the toes, Relax the ankles, relax your shins, calf muscles, knees, bring the awareness to each part as I mention it, relax the thighs, the hips, the whole pelvic area, the whole lower portion of your body is relaxed. We will enhance this by adding the vibrations of the akara. Inhale. Ah.
Thank you. 